and my name is Carlos Michael. I teach art at Shepherdson Elementary here in Fort Collins and also at Harris Bilingual Dual Immersion School. I've always kind of had a knack working with kids and it's just kind of one of those things, you know, I just kind of, turn, you know, this, this makes sense, you know. I, I love to teach, I love working with kids. Um, and like her, that light bulb, being able to introduce them to these new things, to stuff they may not always get to see, stuff that I can do in art class that they can't do in another uh, in a normal type classroom setting and stuff like that. Just those, like I said, the light bulb, the excitement, the fun, the fearlessness they have at this age to do art projects is just, it's amazing. I can say for like for me today, we, we worked with clay and it just that this, they were so into it. They're excited. We kind of just generally practice today, just getting a feel for the clay. Um, they haven't worked with it for a year. Some have never even done clay yet before in their, in their school career and just watching them just the ideas and just having fun I can't wait till we do this next week and when we do our final project and stuff it, just hearing them talk was just like yes this is great awesome like I say it, in my field I can just it just seems to get kind of worse and worse I mean it kind of disheartens me to see I'm not going to say, say teachers and stuff but I would say like administration the the big wigs who make all the laws they just see what kind of like what I do is special as art teachers, the music teachers, the PE teachers. It's just art. It's just PE. Um, they don't stop to realize that, you know, what, what we do brings everything that they learn in the classroom. We just do it a different way. We're just as important as everybody else. But there's this mindset that we're just kind of like the fun class. And, you know, we are. But we all, what we teach is also important, especially with all these 21st century skills and stuff we want the kids to learn. They put that in practice in our class I mean, every day. So that's it, and it just disheartens me to see that programs like mine are just almost like kicked to the curb. Almost a second thought. We always hear we want, if we want to keep more art, we want to keep more PE, we want to keep more music, but it's always the first thing to go. And they're trying hard, but it seems like it's always the first thing that gets that gets cut, really, and it's disheartening. Well, in relation to his art job as a family member, I've watched him over the last few years struggle with will my school have funding for art and um, mm -hmm. you know a, a personal story uh, for uh, from our family Carlos has switched schools how many times yeah I've never been at a place more than two years because the funding gets cut and then um, they have the, to do more with less and like me right now two schools instead of just one so and all over time that means our kids are getting less and less and less of something that may keep them in school longer, mm. um, that may capture their interest and keep them in high school and have them going mm. towards college, we're losing that. And we always preach we want, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We want to be well-rounded. Well-rounded, but um, what whole am I child. looking for? Whole child, but also some stability in our kids' education, and they rarely get it at, at a special position. Just when they get used to doing stuff one way, they've got someone else coming in. And it, 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 I mean, I've got kids asking me now just this year, are you going to be back here, Mr. Michael? God, we love what you do. This is awesome. But they, they, the kids already even know. They, they put, it's stuff they have to put up with every year, and it, it's sad. I know for my budget, like, it's, I'd really not, it's not necessarily set by, by, um, um, student -based by student-based budgeting. I basically get kind of a set amount of money for for the year regardless of how many kids I have and whatnot and it kind of I figured it out a couple of years ago it averages anywhere from like a, like two bucks and 33 cents to three bucks and 25 cents a student for the whole year so I wind up with like you know six seven hundred dollars maybe at the most to work with and it, I mean that looks cool but when you've got to buy supplies that cost you know a hundred bucks another thing's going to cost another 200 you know and whatever school I came into that next year the teacher didn't save anything it's it's tough to to to, to do what you want. Um, you got you know, our teacher dumpster diving thing, you know, to find all the good boxes and all the good pieces of wood and stuff, you know, or go begging at Home Depot for pieces of scrap and stuff like that. That's just part of it. But it's um, I would like to be in on the student-based budgeting kind of stuff. Maybe get a little bit of that money. But um, but but yeah, it's my schools are pretty much affected the same way as 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 my wife's are as well.
What, what is the impact on, on students when we do when okay. learning when we do that? It's got to be as disheartening because, you know, like a lot, so many of the kids nowadays, they are, they learn things in different ways and they can, like, what they can apply, what they learn in their classroom that's so hard for them to apply in one way, or apply it in one way, but then they go to the art room and it's like, click, they get it, or they, they sing about it and they get it, or they're able to move around and, and something clicks, you know, and a lot of those kind of kids, which are a lot of our kids anymore, they're, they're getting affected and it's, it's, it's not right and it, like I said, it hurts when the kids come up to me, Mr. Michael, you're going to be here next year? And parents, you know, telling me these great things, and they're, well, we hope you're here, and it's just, you know, midway through the year, and you're like, gosh, it, it, it makes it makes the year kind of hard too anymore, just for the teachers. And I know? think it goes down, it boils down to what we determine as fundamental pieces of our kids' education, and I believe that the arts are fundamental pieces, but we are so driven by the high stakes testing. And it's hard to test art. And that's the thing, and yeah. It's hard to quantify we don't have an art physical CSAT. education. We can see the effects of childhood obesity in the classroom and what kinds of effects they have on the student as far as their motivation to learn and their ability to stay focused. However, we have to prioritize those subject areas so that we make sure our kids get what they need. The problem is the funding is attached to the data. And we in Colorado test more than we have to. We give more CSAPs than we have to. And we say reading and math are the most fundamental because those are the ones we are graded on. Those are the ones that our school performance is evaluated on and therefore we must put our dollars there. And it's brutal. Reading, math, science, we do them all in art too. I mean, it's, it's all there. Nobody no, stops to think about that. I'll shift gears for just a second. When they, when they talk about uh, innovations like pay for testing, pay for student performance, how, how does that even translate to an art class? To me, it's almost, just when I hear stuff like that, it's, it's all about that kind of accountability issue. We want this data, we want that. It's almost like I'm not working hard enough because I don't have this data to throw it in down for who wants to see it. And it's... I mean, I've, I've sat down with other art teachers at different meetings and organizations and whatnot and just hearing crazy things about, well, okay, we need to have them do this, this, this time of year, this, this, exactly this time of year, this. And it's like, you know, keeping track of how Johnny's eyes on his portraits are two centimeters lower this year and he's getting better at this from here. I mean, that's great, but who am I to say that this person's art is so much better than that? And this other person's art is so subjective. PE, uh, music, I mean, it, it, it all depends on the person. And it's, there's just no quantifiable data. I mean, it's, you can't, the, the smiles and all the tons of pictures I have hanging off of my walls for my kids, I think that says something about it, but that doesn't count as data, you know. And I, I just think the fear that we have is that we have, we have been legislated into believing that these are the only core subjects, that we have math, we have science, we have reading, we have writing. What about social studies? What about history? Do we have to make a test to prove that that's valuable for kids to learn? And I don't believe that's the case. But my worry is the funding is driven by the data rather than driven by the student needs mm -hmm. and the teachers who know the students very well. There's so little voice that we have in that process. It's all about how are your students growing, but we only care about reading and writing and math. And that's, that's not a student. A student grows in so many more ways. Uh, higher class sizes, are just it only makes things just harder and harder. And like coming from the, from the art teacher, phot I've taught photography and stuff like this, and I remember it kind of impacted me when I taught at uh, junior high level. I mean, one year you have 24 and just enough computers for your for your Photoshop project and then you get like 31 35 and you, those 24 computers aren't enough and, and no one stops to think about that or you get that 24 computers and then three wind up breaking and and the other computer lab is down way down the other side of the building but you've still got to be able to do that and, and, and it's just nobody seems to think 
about that those little tiny logistics that are going to just totally impact everything that you do um it's like with my wife here too that many kids it's it, you think about you know maybe two minutes per student helping them out over the whole class and by the time you're done it's it's time to go and you didn't get the chance to do everything you wanted we we give a damn about what we do and the big wigs and everyone making all this all these these crazy laws and whatnot they're playing off of that because yeah we're going to keep going the extra mile but we're getting to the point we we're at the end of the race we want to be there for our kids but i mean we're, we're struggling personally our own our own home lives are, are getting run into the ground because we're at work so often and it, it, no one stops to think about that well in in our family it's affected us greatly i mean we yeah. Carlos has worked 100%. He wants to be full-time, and Art gets cut. And so he's at 80%, and now he's at 80% in two buildings. I've been able to be lucky to stay at 100%, but we have to make up the income somehow. Yeah. I work another job. I teach at a university in the evenings, and I love it. I love teaching. It's just a different kind of teaching. But you have to make it up somehow. And when we do that, you've got two teachers in one family, the person that suffers is my son. Yeah. Because he and, doesn't get both parents at bedtime. And I would love, I, I personally would love to go out and get another job, but if she's going to work that other job, I, I need to be home with our son because we can't afford daycare, you know. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I, right now I work at 80%. I work four days a week, but nine times out of 10, I'm, I'm in there at either one of my schools just getting stuff ready on that Monday, because I have Mondays off right now, I'm not getting paid for all that extra work. I give him trouble about that all the time. <laughs> I tell him, don't go on a day they're not paying you. But you can't not go. You can't come to school and not be prepared. You can't, you don't want to make that decision where your kids are going to suffer. And I think the fear that a lot of teachers have is they're giving everything that they have. But at some point, that's going to, we're going to hit a wall. Yeah. We can't give anymore. I was talking with teachers at the high school a couple of weeks ago, and just the massive workload they have, and then this new thing going through the 75% efficiency plan is going to put a whole other mess of students on them. And, you know, I had f five teachers sitting there at the table talking with us. Four of them are just, they're ready to cry. They've given all they can. And they don't want to walk out or, or stuff like that because they, they don't want to let down these students. But it's gotten to the point where they, they've they got to watch out for themselves a little bit now, too. And it, it, that's absolutely heartbreaking to see these teachers who work their butts off crying because they they don't want to let down their kids. But they've also got to watch out for themselves and their families because no one else is, is doing it. What we're doing is important. We go to school just as long as everyone else does. In my case, a little bit longer. But um, I just don't go into my classroom, throw them a bunch of crayons and say, here, color. You know, coloring's important, yes. But I have, I have state standards I have to watch out for. I have to get such and such amount of done in such an amount of time just because I don't do it exactly as the teacher down the other school does it or I don't have everything to back up what I'm doing. It doesn't mean... What we do is no, is no less important. We want them to go for those 21st century skills. There they are, being taught in PE, being taught in, me, in your media classes, your art classes. It, and that's a lot of the stuff. I remember my junior high classes, just talking with some of those kids, that's what they came for, for my art class at the end of the day. That was it. They could care less about some... I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to bad mouth math and history but that's what they came for was the art the photography getting able to do the old-fashioned photography with the chemicals and in the dark room and all that stuff that's what got them there that last class at the end of the day and with a lot of them that be they, they wanted to be there for art okay so i've got to put forth a little more effort in my english class so i don't get you know booted out or what it all leads we all we all work together and when you start dishing out 
cutting out the other areas we're not part of the whole and nothing nothing works the way it should and I just want those because it seems like here in the, in the schools everybody gets it but when it comes right down to it the ones who make all the rules and all the laws and all that they don't and it's I, for for people in my position right now it's it's disheartening it's really hard I, I love my work but come the end of February March I I like it I, I've, there's never been one year that I've worried about, or there's always there's every year I worry about where I'm going to be, and I'm tenured, and I'm worried about where I'm going to be next year. I know I'll be somewhere, but do I pack? I've got two schools to pack up this time if I have to, um, and am I going to be at two schools? Am I going to be at three schools? Am I going to be all at one? How long am I going to be there? And I'm not one of those people who just show up and hello. I like to gauge where I'm at and then go from there, improve my programs. I've only got great reviews for what I ever do, but it's 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 just a hard road to, to hoe. And I feel like a lot a lot of us are just getting we're getting tired. And I don't want them to just bring in people who are gonna do just a good enough job. Our kids deserve so much more and they keep breaking our backs. I, like I said, I keep getting I'm tired of getting punished for doing a great job every year. And we can only take so much more. But I love my job. I love my kids. It's tough.